the light. Now the material we're going to be using today is second use, or in my case, third use, oil field pipe. This stuff is decommissioned and then they sell it off in bulk. And it's available through a lot of the egg supply, pipe and steel supply yards. Right now in 2020, 2021, it's typically available for between $2 and $3 a linear foot. The main things to keep in mind are that it's not clogged up on the inside. So look down the pipes with a flashlight and make sure that they're straight and not bent or bowed. These are very commonly used for corrals, fence lines, and gate work. And I just recently got a job taking down some corral fencing. And some of these longer sections are going to be ideal for what we're doing with these street lights. Okay, check it out. Today we've got a cool little project. So this is a piece of two and three eighths OD pipe. This is from that corral that I demoed for somebody. And this was the top rail. So we've got one post here. I'm gonna plasma cut this weld out. And then we've got a seam here. So this part's gonna be set in concrete. We'll weld on a couple pieces of rebar on the bottom so that it can't twist in its footing. And then typically in the past when I've done these, I've used three inch or two and seven eighths rather OD pipe. And a lot of the street lamps that you can buy on Amazon now come with a sleeve that fits over two, over three inch. Two and three eighths sleeves nicely inside of a piece of two and seven eighths, which I have on the bandsaw right now. So all we do is we take a little stub like this. We sleeve it right over top, weld it up. We'll cut in a piece of three quarter inch pipe halfway down. Well, not halfway down, about, about seven feet up from the bottom. And that puts it at about belly button height once it's set in the ground. So, and then on that three quarter inch pipe nipple, we screw this on and then we can run power, run a light switch. So anyway, let's enough chit chat, let's get to it.
Okay, this one is gonna get an outrigger because it's gonna suspend some wires. So, we've gotta burn a hole in here in order to hold said wires. All right, I'm happy with that. Using the 210 MP, it's been a really good unit. I've been happy with it. I've had it for, I don't know, probably like six months or so now. Not the cleanest metal, but by the time we cover this in the asphalt based paint, it'll be plenty good. I'm gonna set it on 10 gauge, and I'm gonna keep most of my heat punched down into the pole, and I'll direct a little bit of the wire up onto this box. Okay, I'm gonna take a break. I don't wanna to put too much heat in there. And uh, we'll jump up to the three inch sleeve. Again, I didn't spend a whole bunch of time prepping all of this. If you really wanted to get fancy, you definitely could. And again, all this three inch piece is, is basically an adapter because many of the Amazon lights that you can put on top of these poles are made for three inch. Okay, let's quick bump this back up. Well, let's run one more beat a minute and then we'll bump this back up to our 516th setting. Okay, as I mentioned, we're factory set there for 10 gauge. All I did was kept my heat punched into my pipe and then every once in a while flipped that wire up onto this thin gauge electrical box here. You can see that's watertight right there. These are not watertight probably right now, but by the time we cover this with that, that tar paint, asphalt paint, they will be.
Okay, there you have it. Never touched the setting. Welded that whole joint out. Pretty happy with that. Okay, I've bumped my setting back down to 3 16 and we'll go ahead and get this punched in here. Okay, this is preloaded back ever, ever so slightly. That way when you get the weight of the wires on it, it kind of leans it forward. All right, I've just got this old uh, pipe coupler here. It is a little bit galvanized. So, uh, so I'm gonna hold my breath gonna weld that on the end that way I can thread in a uh, weather tight fitting Okay, we've got some black beauty basically just asphalt based paint and uh, I'm just going to be using a painter's glove this is agitated already but I'm going to use a painter's glove this is the perfect tool for a job like this Alright, so I've already dug a three foot hole here and that's where the light is going to go. This is the one with the outrigger and it's going to suspend these wires and then also light this pathway in the dark. Okay, outdoor rated extension cord, and it's gonna run through the outrigger, up, oops, up, and to the light. Okay, blue is neutral, brown is hot. Get those taped up and get that on. And here's the box mounted on the pole with the switch inside.
the light. So this is an example of a light that we did a long time ago. And this light and another light around the corner all run on the same circuit. And what we do is we have the outrigger here that suspends the wires, but then we also have power coming at the end of that outrigger and going up to the light. And then it runs to the next light, which is further down the circuit. And that way they all draw power off the same source and they all get controlled off the same switch. So but you can see it lights the area up very nicely. And then this is the other one. Same thing, it's got the outrigger. Power comes up over and into the end of the outrigger. And that one actually caught a branch in the last windstorm. That's gotta get pulled off tomorrow. But as you can see, it lights up the area nicely. This branch has to get pruned off also. It's casting a shadow over there. But you know, I mean, that's a 75 foot diameter of light.